Let's give this next segment the opening it deserves because I want to properly introduce to you QHF Sports and one of its sales associates, Peter Contreras. My association with QHF Sports goes back to 2004, my first year at Cedar Park High School. I was introduced to Donald Raines and the quality that his company represents. I'm happy to say they have remained the caretaker of our famed Timberdome Court ever since. And then even more so, starting back in 2011 when they helped me and my Backroads team pull off one of the most epic clinics ever. Yes, I'm talking about the EOLA Experience Basketball Clinic. You know, the, the EOLA School Restaurant and Brewery was home to this clinic. That was started by our dear friend, Mayor Cannon, and it, this place had everything we needed to host this one-of-a-kind event. Food, beer, beds. Well, we didn't get much sleep. But the only thing that needed a great deal of attention was that court inside the gym. In steps QHF Sports to save the day. They revitalized the then 79-year-old pecan wood floor so we could do our clinic with our outstanding clinicians and on-court demos. Of course, the court as you can see, turned out great. You know, our first look at it was about two in the morning as we drove in for the weekend and we had to shine our flashlights on the floor just to get a look. We couldn't figure out how to turn on the lights. So this court wound up being a, a great tribute and it honored the Eola Eagles of the past with their maroon school colors. And this was perfect for my guy, Donald Rains an Aggie grad, and of course, a big fan. He was really, really fired up about that. You know, we did what few people would even dare to talk about and made it into an unforgettable experience. It's a legend that grows bigger with each passing year. And there's no way we could have uh, done this without the support of QHF Sports. They took our idea and they worked with us and they worked around the clock to get that court done. And it was their way of giving back to the coaches that worked so hard to develop the young people uh, that, that we as coaches are around every day. You know, and in speaking of our Backroads team, back then, Justin Harden, Wes and LaCroix, man, those two are my guys, and they had a huge hand in getting this done. And, of course, nobody will ever forget the hospitality that we had with Mayor Cannon. I was thrilled to sit down with my friend Peter Contreras in San Antonio. He's a longtime UIL athletic administrator, and he's now a trusted sales associate of QHF Sports, a proud sponsor, of course, of Backroads Basketball. Uh, now, before we get to that conversation, though, check out this blast from the past I unearthed deep in the Backroads archives. And we're standing on a historic 82-year-old pecan wood floor brought back to life, completely refurbished by the fine folks at Quality Hardwood Floors in San Marcos. Donald Raines, Justin Voigt, these guys, tremendous, tremendous managers of hardwood floor needs, courts, gyms, you name it. These guys are unbelievable with what they can do. You need to call them today. Call them at 512-754-9077. They will take care of any and all of your hardwood flooring needs. Probably not just in gyms, but anywhere. This is a gorgeous court in the historic Eola gym. Here we are, of course, on the back road of basketball home of our Backroads Basketball Clinic. And you can see the roots of the game as, a, as they emerged right here in Eola, Texas. Okay, back at it, Backroads Basketball Booth, TABC Clinic. Peter Contreras joins us as a member of the group at Quality 
hardwood, hardwood floors. Hardwood floors, quality hardwood floors, QHF sports. sports. I know you, I've known you guys for so long as quality hardwood floors, and I know you've changed your name now. So I've got to get used to the QHF. And that's part of the trick. We still get phone calls. Now, you know, you're calling on schools, and they go, no, we use quality hardwood floors. Well, I appreciate the loyalty. That's us. <laughs> we just changed our name two years ago just because uh, we, we now do portable floors. Uh, we built a, uh, at our uh, headquarters here in San Marcos, we built a 12,000-square-foot conditioned warehouse where you can lay down a, 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 a basketball floor. Uh, and so now we're one of four or five companies in the country that do portable floors. And we've been fortunate enough. We've got a relationship with Connor Sports out of Wisconsin, which is kind of the wood supplier, the floor supplier. So with that relationship, we've done the last two men's NCAA Final Four floors. Right. Uh, both Fan Fest floors for the men's. Right. And uh, the last two years, we've done two regional floors as well. So this year, we did the Final Four floor in Arizona and Phoenix. And then we did the regional floor that was in Dallas and L.A. So we're, we've been fortunate in that regard. Well, quality hardwood floors, QHF Sports now. You guys, y'all have a long relationship with me personally, Donald Raines. Uh, back in 2010, I put together a clinic in a little place called Eola, Texas. Mm -hmm. And you guys resurrected this beautiful 1932 uh, pecan wood floor, gorgeous floor. And that allowed us to do an on-court uh, clinic in this amazing venue, this old school that was built in 1932. And I'm just grateful for y'all's partnership and what we're doing here. Well, it's, a lot of, it's like a lot of things in life. They don't make them like they used to. <laughs> uh, 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 and back in the day, those things would st uh, obviously uh, stand the test of time. But, no, there is, there are, and I've been fortunate enough since I've been with the, with the company for the last four years, there have been a couple of projects that I've been involved with where I go look at this floor and they ask, well, what can you do? And I stop short of set, telling them it's going to be like a brand new floor, but when we've got done, uh, uh, they were truly amazed, and, and I obviously, uh, you know, to a certain extent, I was too. Uh, but Lagrange ISD, for example, they've got two floors that were just about as old as what you were talking about, and uh, the purple had now turned yellow uh, and, and black in some places. And those floors look, uh, it's remarkable the work we, we can do on some of the floors. Given, you know, there's got a lot of things got to go right. They, the schools have to do their part. It's not just us coming in and, and working on the floor, so to speak. The schools, you've got, you've got to have the right humidity and the temperature. And, mm -hmm. and you've, there's, there's some responsibilities on the school's uh, part that goes into this process. Well, I'll never forget, we put that clinic together in Eola. There was a lot of logistics that go with resurrecting that place. And it turned into a big slumber party. We slept in the gym overnight. Oh, did you? You know, it was a weekend deal, big party uh, as much as anything. But um, we came into the gym. Donald and those guys had already come in and refurbished it and, and done it. But we hadn't seen it up to that point. Yeah. We, we get there at about 2 a.m. We all had to work a football game or something that night. And we drive into San Angelo out there by Eola. And we, we come into that gym at night, and we're shining our flashlights on the floor, and we just see it. It is it was, it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. You know, and we're fortunate. Donald, the Donald guy you keep referring to yes. is the owner, Donald, oh, uh, yeah. Donald Raines. And we've, he started this company, or he bought it in, in, in 95. And we've been uh, uh, blowing and going, so to speak, since then. And we're, you know, there, there's there's other companies in the state that do a good job. We, we've never said that's not to be the case. Right. But we will put our quality, our, our work uh, and the quality of it, and, and more importantly, the service uh, uh, up against anybody in the state. Again, there's, there's several companies out there in the state of Texas that do a good job. Uh, we're one of them. And I'm not going to be shy away from the fact that we do it better than anybody else. But uh, so when we're uh, we're currently working with about approximately 350 school districts, uh, when you think about it, that's probably on close to half of the school districts in the state. So, you know, it's it's an adage that's true in a lot of aspects of life. Numbers don't lie. And, and the volume that we're doing. 
uh, like I said, working with over 350, about 350 school districts in the state, we'll do anywhere from the last, the, the four years I've been there, uh, probably average between 13 and 15 million square foot of gym floors uh, every year. Again, uh, those numbers are, are real, and, and we'll let the numbers tell our story, so to speak. Well, the numbers tell the story, and me being a customer, so to speak, I work for Leander ISD, Cedar Park High School. You guys have always done our gyms for the last 20 years. I've never been disappointed at all at, at what you guys do for us. We're lucky we do it twice a year, you know. It makes a difference, and, and again, uh, uh, we're, uh, we're fortunate to, to have those opportunities and, and, and those relationships, and I and, – and I think a lot of times we complicate things in life, and it's it, it's about relationships. And, and you heard me say earlier, yes, there's companies that do do good work out there, and, and I've all we will always say that. But the relationship we have with somebody is very very important to us. And what's also important to us is if you have a relationship with somebody else and you're happy with them. We're not. We don't want to break up that marriage. Stay with those folks. Stay loyal to them if yeah. they've been good to you. But when the opportunity comes, and, and you think you might want to consider something different, or unfortunately, the way the school systems and the state funding are going, if your if your school district is requiring you to get a second or third quote, give us a call and we'll give you that quote, and and we'll go from there. Well, you're a great fit for QHF, and because you've got a connection to basketball and schools. Tell us, tell everybody what you did before before this. In a prior life, I worked at the UIL for about 26 years <laughs> as, as, as one of the athletic directors for the state. And, and 26 uh, fun years, 26 long years. Uh, but uh, to saying all that, I wouldn't change one thing about it. It was fun. Uh, two things about the job that I really, really enjoyed. Obviously, the people that you get to deal mm -hmm. with and then uh, there was no two days alike. Every day seemed to be similar. And we all have those jobs, I think, or days from time to time. You go to the office, so to speak. You've got your schedule set out for the day. Okay, this is when I'm going to get done today. And all heck breaks loose by, by 9 o'clock in the morning. So that was a fun part of the job. But, again, and, and, and I appreciate you mentioning the fit. Uh, probably the biggest thing I enjoy about this job now is I still get to talk to folks like you. Sure. I still get to talk to coaches. I still get to deal with athletic directors. Obviously, still deal, dealing with coaches, and uh, and that that's fun. Well, when it, it's interesting that you brought up the the chaos that might ensue when you after you get down there to the to the office uh, right off of I thirty five, but um, you know, you look at the UIL, what a daunting task they have. You know, in my pursuit of these going around and checking out all these old gyms, many, many years ago, I went to the Benjamin, Texas gym. Now, they're building a new one now. Okay. History of Benjamin, Don Haskins got his start coaching there. Oh, did he? I did not oh, know yes. that. And they have a really cool old gym there. Uh and when I was touring the school, they had, uh, was it nine students on campus? And they had a basketball team, oh, yeah. but the girls played with the boys. That's one of those quirk in the UIL rules that uh, you, you, you're, you're obligated uh, to offer the con uh, corresponding sports if you have the numbers. And if you don't have the numbers, then the girls can play with the boys. Yeah, but not vice not versa. Not vice versa. There's been, there's been court cases that say, no, you can't do that. And look at all the crazy things yeah. we're dealing with now. But, but so you've got, on one hand, you've got Benjamin, Texas with nine students. Mm -hmm. Now, I think they're well above that now, but not by much. And then you've got, say, well, the, the state champion for the boys this year, Plano East, six, what is it, seven? They're, they're pushing 7,000 students. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's not 7,000 students in, uh, what is Benjamin, uh, King County, Knox County? Yes. I mean, they're not, they're not, there's not 7,000 people in their county. County, much less. So the, the UIL has to govern 
all the way from Plano East down to Benjamin. Yeah, the, the, the trick some days is, is it, it's not a trick. Uh, this is kind of philosophy that we were fortunate to have with Dr. Bailey Marshall, and then Dr. Farney, and now Dr. Brightup. We're going to treat everybody the same. Uh, that basketball game for that kid and that mom and dad is the most important thing on that Tuesday and Friday night, and I could care less where it's being played. That's the most important basketball game for the kid, uh, boy, boy or girl, and it's the most important game of the night for the mom and dad. And grandpa and grandma, and you can go on down the line. So that, you know, that we've got over four, 1,400 high schools in the state of Texas. I, and I, and it's, I don't know the exact number, but it, that's when I left five years ago, and I'm sure the number's gotten bigger. And the diversity of the state, a uh, couple of things. You know, we... And you hear this in all the sports, especially in football, because we know what football and the relationship it has in this state. But you would hear, and you probably still do, well, you don't have the best two football teams playing in the state tournament, uh, state finals. Well, maybe not, but we're not. We've never maintained at the UIO that we had the best two teams in the state finals. We maintain that there's a representation of the best. You're going to have a team out of Region 1, out of Region 2, out of Region 3, and Region 4, have a chance. And that's a rep representation of that. Because, uh, uh, and ironically, I was having this conversation with somebody yesterday here at the clinic about the number of teams that make the playoffs. And, you know, why are you doing Why did they do that? Is it all about money? And I don't know if I could convince them that money was not a factor in any of those decisions. Uh, it's about, again, representation and the percentage of schools in the sport, one sport was make, having 47, 48 percent of their school uh, t uh, schools in that in that sport uh, or uh, make the playoffs, but yet another sport only 36 percent. So there was that was some of the logic behind adding teams in in certain classifications uh, along the lines to give those kids that opportunity. Hey, the first round of the playoffs in every sport. Uh, and every parts of the, of the of the state is a big deal. Now, do they have a chance to win? I don't know, but I, they they do. If you got if I'm playing you, I got a chance. W will it happen? Maybe not, but it's happened sometimes. So, and you got to remember the first time Texas went to two teams in the playoff. No, th yeah, two teams in the two playoffs teams. Uh, in football. Uh, one of the Colleen's a second place team, won the state championship. So, you know, there's, there's a, and, and I, I talk about the diversity of state, and let me throw a couple of facts that are still true today. There are five state capitals closer to El Paso than Austin, Texas. Yeah, yeah. And that you can drive, El, the drive from El Paso to, uh, Texarkana rather, to El Paso, you can get to Chicago quicker than you can get to El Paso or Texarkana. <laughs> so those are some of the, Challenges. The challenges that, that don't change. So, Well, I'm going to tell this story. I told it earlier, but it, I'm going to tell it again. You were talking about the expanded playoffs, and we've got the split divisions probably yeah. coming up. Coming up. For no, everybody. no regional tournaments anymore. I was a sophomore in high school when the UIL, the UIL went to two teams in the playoffs, the top two teams. Yeah. Well, Dimmitt, where I went, our big rivalry was Abernathy at that time. I mean, you two, want to talk about oil and water. There and, was, and two basketball-renowned basketball yes, schools. Yes, and it was, it was like cats and dogs. We did not like each other at all. Huh? So Abernathy, true story, they beat us literally at the buzzer, kind of a tip-in, last-second play in both district ball games. They swept us, but it came down to the last Bucket. shot. yeah. So we're both in the playoffs now, and, of course, as the way the bracket is built. Regional finals. Regional finals. So here we are, Lubbock Municipal Coliseum, five or 6,000 people in the stands, and it comes down to the last possession. Luckily, we have the ball. We inbound the ball. Dwight McDonald takes it basically full court, pulls up at the free throw line, swish. One of the biggest, most memorable celebrations I've ever had in my life. One of the many, many I mean, things that, that are that are wonderful about athletics, and it's not just at the high school level, if you show me a matchup 
where one team has already played twice and they've won both games, I'm taking the other team every time. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I, I don't know why, but if, if you're seeing somebody a third time, they're a pretty good team, and it's it's just tough to beat somebody three times. It is. Much less twice. It is. I meant to uh, correct me. We weren't playing Abernathy. We were playing Abernasty. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, so let's get the record that, straight. That, that. You're going back to your childhood days now. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I, I may be mistaken, and, and you would know this. Uh, is Dimmit at one time only one of two schools that won football, basketball, and baseball state championship all in the same no, year? No, that's not right. That's, that's not. not right. That's not Dimmit. There, it's happened twice. There, there is a thing that Dimmit we we did in 1952. We won a state title in boys and girls at basketball. basketball. The both teams went undefeated, and they were coached by the same person. Now, the okay. interesting thing is, you if you look in the record books in 1952, you will not see the Demet Bobbies as state champion because they elected to play in a different league. That was back when there were different leagues, mm -hmm. and the UIL just began. Uh, sponsoring girls championships yeah so they played in something that I believe was called the McCamey League that was in Waco okay uh, and then eventually they joined the UIL oh, yeah. stuff and and you know the rest is history uh, but no Dimmit does it not in baseball no who was the basketball coach at, at Dimmit back in that day a gentleman by the name of John Blaine okay John Blaine okay um, I want to I want to kind of finish this up going back to the quality hardwood and the QHF angle you know you you guys do everything from the final four floor to a high school gymnasium to other little projects you guys made for us an autograph board you probably right. hadn't seen it but it was you know and it's in our locker room and it's a really cool it's thing. from the old floor that we pulled out it's actually from some benches okay. that okay. we made. It looks just like a, a wood floor. Okay. So, again, you guys do amazing work. I'm so grateful for you guys giving me the opportunity to help set all this up and, and, and get these stories out and honor these coaches and players and traditions that we have in Texas, something that I know you know a lot about. Yeah, and, and we appreciate that relationship and, and the work the bo the work you've been doing behind the scenes, so to speak. But, you know, and, and, and just to, to in closing – if you've got a wood floor, even stages, auditorium stages, dance floors, whatever, if you've got, a, got if you have a wood floor, uh, give us a shout. We're it. in San Marcos, uh, Texas is our headquarters. We're easy to find. Uh, we're growing, uh, but give us an opportunity. Come visit with you, uh, and get let us get you give you a price quote so you can compare. If you can fix a floor in Eola, you can do it <laughs> anywhere. Well, we, I, I, I like I said early on, I'll stand by our work. It's pretty doggone Absolutely. good. Peter, thanks.